so you've signed up for a subscription at pythonmorsels.com. Now how can you make the best use of it? Well, Python Morsels is based around hands-on learning, which means writing Python code. So I recommend focusing every learning session around working on a Python exercise, and that's specifically what I'd like to talk about. Once you've selected an exercise to work on, you'll find yourself on the exercise submission page. The text box in the middle of the page is where you'll enter your code. Whenever you'd like to check whether your code works, you'll click the big green button. This will run the automated tests against your code. Notice that that changed the color of our test results section. Red indicates that the automated tests are not currently passing for the base problem through bonus two. Gray means our tests aren't passing and that bonus is not recommended for our skill level. We could try to solve it, but it might be a little bit discouraging at this point. So grayed out sections aren't recommended, but the red and green ones are recommended. Green means our code is passing the tests and red means it's not. The test failures tab will show us which tests against our code are currently failing. We can see the name of the test as well as where within our Python process our code failed. Sometimes the test will show an assertion error, meaning the test asserted something to be true that wasn't true. Sometimes the test will show a traceback that indicates an exception that was raised while our code was being called. Sometimes it's easy to tell what went wrong from either the traceback or the name of the test that was running, but it's not always easy. You may need to visit the line of code in the test file that failed to see what that test was actually checking for. Note that the test file is located in the second tab on the page here. We were just in the test failures tab and we can go back there to continue looking at the tracebacks. What should you do if you're not sure what the traceback indicates? Well, there are pretty much three options. You could go to your favorite search engine and look up the last line in the traceback and hope for some useful results. Or you could copy paste the test output as well as the test file and your solution into ChatGPT or another AI system and ask what the test failure might be indicating about your code. Or you could download the test file and use your favorite Python debugger or print calls to figure out what the state of your code was when the test failure happened. We've downloaded the test file to try out that last option. Once we've downloaded the test file, we'll want to make sure that we've made a module with the correct name that has our code within it. Then we can run the tests to see the same output as in the browser. Let's use the Python debugger to see what our code is doing. We'll stick a call to Python's built-in breakpoint function just before the point where one of our tests was failing. Now when we run our test, we'll want to step into our function to see what went wrong. We'll keep stepping through our code until an exception is about to be raised. Once we see an exception is raised, we'll take a look at some of our local variables. For example, this items variable is a number but we're expecting it to be an iterable because we're trying to loop over it. That's the problem. We need to handle this situation within our code. The Python debugger is very powerful, but it can take a bit of learning. We could instead add print calls to our code to print out the current state of particular variables as we run our code. But for some exercises, this might make our tests fail, especially if the tests are meant to check the output of our code. In that case, you may need to manually test your code from the Python REPL or from your system command prompt. So you've spent some time writing and revising your code. Some of the tests pass at this point and some of them don't. Now it's time to move to the next step. We'll click this blue button to lock in our solutions and reveal the solution walkthrough. Even if you haven't solved everything you'd like yet, don't worry, you can resolve the same exercise again a couple weeks from now. For the sake of effective learning, I highly recommend spending a small amount of time on an exercise, reading the solutions, making note of what you'd like to improve next time, and then scheduling another attempt again in a couple weeks. Now that we've revealed the solutions, I recommend reading these from top to bottom. When you see something that's new or interesting to you, take note of it. Write it down or put it in a text file and try modifying your solutions to use that feature. If you see something that you don't understand, look for a link that might explain it a little bit more deeply. You don't need to click all these links though. Important topics will naturally come up repeatedly. So if you see something a few times, you'll probably eventually want to click through and read more or watch more about it. Once you've taken note of interesting things that you hadn't considered before, schedule an exercise resolve and leave a note for yourself on what you'd like to try differently in the future. After you've done that, 
give yourself a high five. Congratulations on attempting yet another Python Morsels exercise. Make sure to pace yourself. Try to do something every week. Ideally, work on an exercise. Budgeting time for a learning habit is important, but how we spend the time that we budget is just as important. We often spend too much time watching videos and not enough time writing code and rewriting code.